All right, welcome to Youth Night Iglesia Ventela. How's everybody doing tonight? How many of you guys are ready for part four of this love, sex, and marriage series that we're having? I want each and every one of us to stand up and sing this song. Sing this song with us if you know it. Sing. Sing it out with me like this, sing The sun and on the clouds Kings and kingdoms will bow down Declare tonight And every chain will break As broken hearts declare His praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty Sing it with me, say our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Say, our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before the sun. So, oh, 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 oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. This the God who comes to say, is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it out, say! Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before you. Say, our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before you. How many of you guys know in the Bible it says that there will be a day where every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess in the name of Jesus and everyone will confess that Jesus is Lord. How many of you guys believe that? So if you believe it, I want you to sing it with your voices out loud tonight. Help us sing. Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing with me. Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop, Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Sing it out loud. Say, who can stop the Lord? Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Say. The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battles And every knee will bow before you Say, Our God is the Lamb The Lamb that was slain For the sins of the world His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Amen. How many of you guys can give a great shout of praise tonight? How many of you guys can give a shout of praise tonight? I want us to sing. I want us to sing that bridge just one more time. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? I want you to really contemplate this question. I want you to contemplate this question in your life and whatever it is that you're going through. 
because nobody, nothing, no circumstance you can face, no challenge you can face in your life can ever stop what God wants to do in your life. How many of you guys believe that? Okay. The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I want you to sing with your voices out loud tonight. Sing with me. Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty One? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Say, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop? I want you to sing it when we say, no one. Sing it with me. Sing. Sing. No one. No one. No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Say, no one. Say. No one, no one, no one Who can stop the Lord on? Sing it out much louder, say No one, no one, no one Who can stop the Lord One more time, sing it out loud, say No one, say No one, no one, no one Who can stop the Lord Almighty no one can stop our Lord Almighty. How many of you guys believe that? Give God a great shout of praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you tonight. We thank you for the dry bones that are about to awake tonight. The dry bones that are awaking right now. In our circumstances, in our lives, in our finances in our relationships I pray father that you bring our dry bones to life as we sing this song I want you to speak life into the dry bones that you're facing in your life right now whether it is at work or in your life uh, in your in your finances relationships anything that you're facing if you see that it's a season where you see dry bones, I want you to do just like the prophet Ezekiel did. He spoke life into them because it came from God. Amen? I want you to sing this song if you know how to sing it. Sing it with me. Say, Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. But since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment. It's Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Sing with me, say This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise making dead men walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Sing Pentecostal fire Is stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon How many of you guys believe? Say resurrection power Runs in my veins too I believe there's another miracle here in this room Say, this is the sound of the rivals battling Sing it all out, say This is the praise making dead men walk again So open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again how many of you guys can hear the dry bones rattling tonight? I hope that you can hear the dry bones in your life rattling. If you can't hear those dry bones, I want you to hear the next part of this song. Hear the next part of this song. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to uh, just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elisha if there's anything that he can do just ask the tomb that was rolled at the tomb and the garden what happened when God says to move say and I feel him Do it now, do it now. This 
you think us can hear the sound of dry bones rattling right now? The prophet Ezekiel goes into the valley of the dry bones and it's a whole army of dead people, dead dry bones. It's one thing for you to see a bone, it's another thing for you to see dry bones. When something is dry, when bones are dry, it implies that it, it, that thing, whatever that was, that carcass or that dead body has been there for a while. It means that thing has been dead for a while. Prophet, Prophet Ezekiel tell, talks to God and he asks, and God asks him a question. God asks him, do you believe, do you believe that these bones can come back to life? And he gives God a, a smart answer. He says, I don't know, God. I don't know. Do you, do you think they can come back to life? So then God told him, tell them right now to come back to life and one thing you have to know about this passage is it's not prophet Ezekiel that makes the bones come to life it's the Word of God the Bible the, the, the Second Testament says this the New Testament says this in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was, was with God and the Word was God it's the Word that brought those dry bones back to life and I don't know what dry bones you have in your life I don't know what dry bones you've been dealing with. I don't know what is, uh, what's your season of dry bones, but I want you to sing, sing it with us and declare your dry bones to, to live, all right? And I want you to sing this part with us. Say, I hear the sound. Say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. You got to sing it much louder than that. Sing it with me. Say, say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. All right, I like that sound. That sounds better. One more time. Say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Yeah. Last time, say, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Woo. I want you to declare live to your bones. And I just want you to scream it. Scream to something that's dead. I don't want you to just say live. I want you to scream it out loud with us, all right? See how loud I'm going to scream. Try to match me, all right? Say live. 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 Go oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Say live. 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 Oh, dry bones hear the word of the Lord say let let oh dry bones hear the word of the Lord say let let oh dry bones hear the word of the Lord say let let say dry bones hear the word of the Lord say your word God that brings our dry bones back to life we praise your name tonight because only you you and only you God you are worthy of the praise we're giving you right now you are worthy of the adoration we we give to you as we prostrate ourselves here in your presence God Yours and I will. 
And now my shame is gone I stand amazed And your love undeniable Your grace goes on and on And I will sing For your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name
nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Saint. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Oh, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. Say what a powerful name Jesus. say Oh what a powerful name it is the name of oh, one more time Jesus. what a wonderful name what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus for your name tonight we praise you we give you glory amen are you this tonight how's everybody doing tonight good awesome I am so excited to be here I am so excited to start to the part three of our series today we're gonna talk about dating all right that's the most to me that's gonna be awesome tonight super awesome last week we talked about marriage uh, Pastor Carlos brought a great word uh, last Friday, and I know that tonight is not going to be nothing less but spectacular. Amen? Are you guys ready? What? <laughs> Are you guys ready? Yeah. Awesome. Well, the person that, the people that are coming uh, to talk about dating are actually our mentors. Okay, so me and Alan, like y'all know, we've been married for 10 years, and it's so important, so important for when you are dating, when you are, even when you're married, to have couple, to have people that could guide you, that could help you, and we, me and Alan, have, were, have not been able to would have not been able to make it to 10 years if it wasn't for the love, the care, for the patience of Tiago and Diana Nunes. Amen. So give them a hand clap. So we're very grateful for them. I'm grateful personally for them because they've impacted my life. And I know that they are the right people to bring the word tonight to you guys. So I want you to keep your eyes, your mind, your spirit open because I know each and every one of you are in the dating phase right now okay you're maybe you're not dating someone but you're probably looking you're probably kind of like scoping and hoping maybe you know or maybe just scoping just to see what's out there you know and so when you are scoping we want you to make sure that you're scoping for the right people right babe right person right person not people we don't want multiple <laughs> awesome Okay, it's working. Uh, yes, is it working? No, it's okay. I, uh, I don't want to say too much because last time I kind of said everything that, <laughs> that I was going to preach about. But uh, since she said our marriage uh, is based off of Tiago and Diana, if anything happens, it's y'all's fault. So uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say on top of that before they get to it is she was talking about dating and it just came to mind. But when you're, when you're single and you're going out with someone, that's dating. But it doesn't end there. When you get married, you still have to date your person. Because if you don't date that person, somebody else is going to date them for you, and they're going to be gone, okay? So I'm just giving you something of advice, too. Don't stop when it gets married, like Carlos was saying. Don't let it stop. Don't let it, okay, now I'm going to let loose. I used to be a size zero. Now I'm a size two zero, you know? Like, let's... Uh, <laughs> You got to keep that fire going, keep the day, bring the flowers, the chocolate. So dating doesn't end just when you're dating, right? It also continues when you're, when you're married. So I, that just came to mind. Um, but we really want to, I know Tiago and Diana have gave a lot of these classes to us. We've been, again, like Talita said, a, lot of, a part of a lot of them. I've learned a lot of quotes. There's uh, almost sometimes I almost tattoo some quotes. Um, hurt people, hurt people. Y'all know that one. I've said it a few times. So I've learned a lot from these guys. Please, another round of applause for Tiago and Diana Nunes. I feel... <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate that uh, introduction. Man, talk about if you fail tonight or you come out here and people fall, falling asleep. It's like, bro, uh, Talita really hyped me and Deanna up as they're, you know, but 
Uh, we are honored that at least, you know, it's nice once in a while to have somebody that actually, um, I think with age and by your life example and the things, the choices that you make, you can either be a good example of somebody or a, all right, there we go. Okay, we're doing ground participation tonight. All right, so before we start, uh, you know, tonight is dating uh, uh, subject, right? Or So, uh, so sometimes we hear the word dating and we're thinking, uh, you know, we're already in a relationship, you know, but we're going to break that down. But I see a lot of people sitting by themselves tonight. Uh, guys, you know, I, in, in back in my days, you know, when, when I was in the Toledo, I say the scoping, I, my scope was tight. You know what I'm saying? I had 20-20 vision and I scope, and then I had a magnifier even e e deeper in there. So luckily the Lord gave me a really tall wife that I didn't have to, like, you know, scope too hard to see. But uh, I'm saying this is the opportunity. If you're sitting next to somebody or if you're sitting alone, look around. Get closer to somebody that you don't know tonight. Introduce yourself. Say, how you doing? Do you mind if I sit next to you? My brother, my sister. You know, that's if they're married, you know, if, if you see somebody who's married, like uh, uh, um, Monica, you know, have another married sister sit next to you. No, we're going to respect boundaries. Oh, no, we can do, we, this is a, no, we're brothers and sisters here. Nobody, nobody's trying to do anything out of the ordinary. But I'm just saying, guys, you got to, you got to take an opportunity of these opportunities, you know. But anyways, <laughs> go ahead, babe. Before I, oh, another thing, I did, I did, I did notice the Alicia Keys uh, uh, input in there that somebody put. I mean, I thought Paula was going, I thought Paula was going to New York. <laughs> I've heard this song. Did before. anybody this notice this that they put Alicia <laughs> Keys? Y'all should have gotten here early. That was beautiful. But anyway, go ahead. Anyways, uh, I'm excited to be here tonight, guys. Um, I'm very honored also by what Selena and Allen said. Um, all the praise to God because we, this has been a crazy journey, really. Um, we've been married. It's going to be 12 years, it, the 24th of to this month. To each other. Yes, whole time. to each other, 12 years, plus seven years of dating, which, you know, if you, I don't want to talk about that. I mean, we're talking about marriage, uh, dating right now, but um, that's a long time. That's a long time. If you think about it, almost 20 years. But anyhow, it's been amazing. I'm happy. I'm glad that God gave me you, and now we have two beautiful babies. Um, huh? My God. Calm down, calm down. Right? I don't know if the Holy Spirit revealed that to you, but if he wasn't him, I rebuke you for saying that. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, we're going to start off tonight with a short prayer. I know Talita and Alan already prayed, um, or Paulo prayed. Um, I just want to start off with a prayer just so that God can open our minds, open our hearts, uh, open our ears clearly for everybody here, um, and also that he can talk through us, um, because I, I really believe that tonight what we're going to talk about is going to be very, very useful for all the single people here, and, you know, this is the time when you have a choice now. This is when you choose the person that you want to be with. Once repeat you're in that, that, that... Can you repeat that again? Yes. This is the now, time. Now, this is the time. Please right, take like advantage of the time. <laughs> this is the time, though. No, for real. All joking aside, this is the time when you get to choose. This is the time when you get to talk about things, when you get to bring things to the table and negotiate. But anyhow, we're going to get into oh, wow. it. I don't want to... You're going to negotiate wanna, tonight? Okay. I don't want to start off before the prayer. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, close our eyes. And Father God, we come before you humbly, God, um, this evening. And, excuse me, um, no COVID here. Uh, Father, <laughs> we come before you, God, and we ask humbly, Lord, that you can use me and Tiago, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit 
be revealing things to us, God. Even though we prepare this class and we have what we want to say, if there's anything that you put in our hearts and our mind, God, let us be sensitive to your to your voice, um, to what you want us to say. And in the same manner, God, I ask for every person that's sitting here that you can bless every single youth here present and the ones that weren't able to make it but they're watching online. God, I ask that you bless and you pour your spirit over them as well, that you can open their ears, God, open their hearts, open their minds, God, and you be the one speaking to them, God, as to whether they should continue or end that relationship that they're in or if they're looking, God, that they can ask you for guidance when they're choosing their um, dating partner. In your name we pray. Amen. Everybody say? Okay, let me hear y'all say, hey. Let me say, hey, I want to find the right person. But first, I need to be the right person. Yes. Okay? So that's a big part right there. So let me ask. This? Oh, yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you guys a question. When you see a couple that's uh, engaged, right? They're just recently engaged. And you ask, hey, why are you guys getting married? What's like the top of the list response that they say if you were to ask them, why what do, do they want to get married? Why are you getting married? Oh, you, it's almost like you're about to get married. Huh, huh, I don't know. <laughs> just as like, well, I don't, we always I don't say because we are in. Because we're in love. love. So our first point tonight is being in love is not an adequate foundation for building a successful marriage. But I thought I needed to be in love. Right? People usually say we're in love. Mm. You know, we're so in love that we mm. intend. It hurts sometimes. We truly intend to make each other happy for the rest of our lives. Right? This is a wrong perception. Um, it's called the in love illusion. Um, with time... All these feelings, all these emotions fade away. It's like when you have a new car, right? When you get a brand new car, Ken, probably mm. you're taking, you're getting it washed weekly. You're mm. keeping it clean, no trash, nothing. Even with a new phone, right? You're keeping the phone. You know, you better not drop the phone because the moment you drop the phone, that's the end of the world. But eventually, <laughs> you, you know, after you drop the phone, you don't care about it anymore. After that first crack, so it's like, uh, you know. And it's the same thing that happens. Unfortunately, um, this euphoric feelings disappear, and they're replaced with misery, hurt, anger, disappointment, and resentment. Sometimes falling in love can be compared to um, the jungle animal hunt. Why don't you tell us what? about it? Well, I mean, think about it like this, right? If you can fall into something, you can also get out of something, right? So when you fall in love, this example is sort of like, there's a hole that's dug in the midst of like uh, this animal's path to like the waterway, right? If you think, of, let's think of the jungle. And then it's camouflaged with leaves right before it gets to the, to the water. So here comes a little innocent deer, you know, it's like dick, 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 looking for the water. And it walks, you know, uh, uh, an animal walks by unaware until it falls into that pit, right? Uh, because it's looking for, the, 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 the attraction is the what? Okay, not everybody all at once. The attraction, I need you all to work with me tonight because I need that energy back and forth. We're not going to do this, right? The attraction is the what to the animal? The water. So, you know, we walk around doing our own thing sometimes in life. And when all of a sudden, Paulo's at school and he spots across the room the trap. Right? And she sees her. And then it's down the hall or at church. She's up here singing to the Lord. And you just, you know, you, you see it. There's the water. There's the water. And we all going to fall in that trap, right? And, but, but sometimes, you know, we look down the hall, we look down the room, and, and there she is. And bam, we fall in love, right? And, and, and that's where that example of the animal looking for the water comes in. Right. We claim that there's nothing we can do about it, right? We're in love. It's just it's just so natural. It How just many of y'all have been in love? Raise your hands if you haven't been in, truly in love. And yeah, you thought maybe you right? thought it was love. How about that? Nobody? My God, three people. No, oh, here we go. Because okay, a couple we more. are in love, you know? we assume and it's nice, right? that we're, we're destined to marry. And the sooner the better, right? Why wait if we're in love? That's my life partner, wait, man. You know? And I'm 13. Okay, remember that first love you had? 
funny story, just because you say you're 13. When I was, I was definitely younger than that, maybe 11, I don't know. I had this crush on this guy, and we were going to church, whatever. But it, we never even, like, nothing, nothing. No boyfriend, nothing. We, at most, we held hands. That's it. But anyhow, one time, he Not just kind of told somewhere. me, he just kind of told me, um, you know, I don't think we're meant for each other. I was, like, crying. And I remember we were in this, uh, we were in this uh, conference, and <laughs> I went and talked to the pastor, and I was like, hey, you know, this is what he told me. And he's like, how old are you? And I told him, I'm 11, whatever. He's like, honey, it's okay. Like, it's, it's not a big deal. You'll, you know, this is, not, this is not the guy. This is not the guy. Like, you'll move forward. You'll get out of this. At um, 11, you think? At 11, I thought, recovered? yes. I was pretty sad back then. Anyhow, going back to our story, we, what do we do when we're in love, where we found this person, we're engaged? We tell our friends, right? We tell people, we tell our family, and they work and they operate in the same pattern the same thought process that we do so what do they say oh you're happy great if it makes you happy it can't be that bad right mm. if it makes you happy go ahead get married we're happy for you yes we'll support we'll be there for the wedding yeah um you know they, they just party. blindly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just they Christian just party. blindly agree with you and what happens is that we fail to recognize that our social or spiritual or intellectual interests are completely off Right? We're just focused in the love part. We love each other, but we don't talk about value goals. Systems. We don't talk about, yes, our value system, how they're completely off. And unfortunately, after saying I do, all this butterflies, all these things kind of fade away eventually, just like it does with your phone, just like it does with new things. You, After a while, you get over them. Uh, and then all these differences come to surface and that's when people realize oh, i think i married the wrong person you, you ever know? heard somebody ever say that anybody <laughs> if, if, oh, yeah, we're just talking to like girls if here. i, I mean, was really, really um, if i was married to somebody else i, I know i would be happy and you, said you year, somebody said to you after one year <laughs> wow you don't expect me to be married to this person for so long if we don't love each other anymore right um, and all this can be explained by the butterflies, the tingles that we feel. It's, it's a beautiful thing, absolutely, 100%. Yes, you should feel it because it, it drives you initially to do things. It makes you fall in love. It does all the cute puppy love things. However, nobody should be making major decisions based on the butterflies' feelings. Especially you. when you feel like you're in love. Yes. You and should like, marry some of without like, the tingles, right? Because the tingles are like the cherry on top of a sundae. But you can't have a sundae with only the cherries. You guys hear that? Unless so, you're really weird and okay, right. you order, you go to DQ <laughs> and you order a sundae with only cherries, then you're weird. Okay, except um, for you, then it doesn't make sense. There's a whole part that goes to that sundae. There's different parts also that goes to a relationship in right. order for it to continue, right? Now, research indicates that the average lifespan of this in love obsession phase... Anybody know? Phase is only the puppy love phase. Oh, dang. Tammy's years. reading Tammy. books. Tammy. She's reading books. Good job, Tammy. Two years. Two Tammy. Years. Oh, okay. Well, it's up there, too. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. We well, go. never mind, Tammy. Take that back. <laughs> Tammy's like, two months. <laughs> Girl, it's up there. Two years. Now, you might ask, what is the purpose of dating? Basically, it is a sign to get to know each other and to examine the intellectual. Again, hear me. Hear. Notice that I'm repeating this, and we're going to talk about it at the end again. Intellectual, emotional, social, spiritual, and physical foundation for marriage. Uh, only then, after you've already thought all these things through, then you can make an adequate decision whether you should marry or not this person. So now you might also wonder how, you know, we're now going on 12 years, 10 years after the two, <laughs> that the two puppy, average. That puppy's know. full grown now. <laughs> puppy, that ain't a puppy no more. That puppy has been so grown, how do you how do you keep that love alive, right? Now, romantic, that's point number two. Romantic, romantic love has two stages. The first stage is driven by euphoric love, right? That's the being in love. That's what we just talked about. It requires zero effort. You just do everything. You do things that you don't even like to do, but you do them, and you don't even complain about it. That's something just, we, for, we forget, right? How many girls here, the first... A couple of relationships you've been in the first three, two months, six months, maybe a year, 
you do you did some things that you look back, you're like, how stupid was I for doing that? And you will never do that again right now. You know, but you think because of that moment. So I really want you to go back to that mentality and really focus on what are we telling you? We're telling you to get out of love in order to be married. Keep thinking. No, no, Just keep no, thinking. No. Now, Just keep thinking. in that phase also, the person that you're dating seems to be entirely perfect. You might even ask them, Joyce, what's one bad thing you can tell me about Ken? Nothing. There's Ken not is two perfect. Of him. He's amazing. <laughs> Joyce is like, the, the fact that there's not two of him? <laughs> right. <laughs> No, you might ask. I mean, she's completely. You can ask. Blinded. You can ask uh, Joyce's mom. Hey, oh. what do you think about oh. Ken? Oh, she might tell you a list, right? Or maybe not. Or here. I mean, let's, brother, let's reverse it. Let's reverse uh, Joyce's it. Brother let's ask uh, oh. Miss Angola. Oh, wow. What's wrong with Joyce? Mm. No, she wouldn't do that. She would never do that. Mm. <laughs> she would never. We do We came that. out she here tonight to that. bring drama. <laughs> 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 to your mama. No, no, no kidding, but, but the no point drama. is, the point is, <laughs> in your eyes, this person is perfect, entirely perfect. But other people might actually see the flaws more obvious than you. Than you Isn't do. it weird that only other people see the crazy <laughs> when you're crazy, when you're in love? Like everybody's telling you he's crazy, but you're like, no, no, he's not crazy. You're crazy. He's good, <laughs> right? So that's what we're trying to get to right there. Uh, the second stage is the intentional love. This is intentional, what you have to work now, because now you start seeing all the things that you did not see before, so now you have to put in effort. So you know when people say uh, a relationship takes work? Okay, yes, pay attention. This, this, this is, is the it. work part. How do you work into a relationship? Sometimes you just hear that, and they don't go deeper into it. So. Right. When you come off the high, right, we're in the high, it's all beautiful, great. Now, two years out, average, you know, um, you, start, you start to think, maybe I married the wrong person, something wrong with them. We used to talk all the time. Now we can't even, like, stand each other. A husband might say, might say I don't understand. I work every day. I pay for this house. I pay for the bills. I bring the food. And Is she's still complaining. Says? Is that what a husband says? I've okay. heard that well, I heard a wife say one time. In a far, far away place. Well, he does all those things, but, you know, he doesn't want to talk and have quality time with me, so I don't feel loved. I'm like, bro. I heard right. a wife one time say I've, that. I've, I heard, heard, I've heard that somewhere. one, too. I've heard that one, too. Now, clearly, the puppy love, it's not going to make it work at this point, right? So now, one tool that we have discovered is this book that is called The Five Love Languages. This is note-taking time. How many of you... I've heard five about this. love languages. The How many five of you have languages. read the book? Read it. What's one? Good job. One love language. Oh, okay. Oh, oh that's one. your favorite. <laughs> Physical touch. You remember that one? My that's God. A, that's a good one. Okay. Do we have any Close. other one? Acts of service. Acts of service. Yes. Anybody else? Words of Gifts. affirmation. Yes. Gifts. There we go. Good job. Good job, guys. That's All four. Right. All right. Did you guys know that typically? So Couples. for a group of people that supposedly read it, we got four out of the five. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. We do it. Uh, <laughs> At least y'all got four out of five. Okay. Quality time. That was, mm. that was the one that was missing. Now, um, did you guys know that mostly in a relationship, couples tend to have different love Wait, languages? One quick, one quick question. Do you know, now this is a general question. Ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, okay? And if you're sitting by yourself, ask yourself. <laughs> Pretend there's a neighbor next to you. Go like this. Do you know you have a love language? Ask that person. What did, what did they say to you? What, ask, Look at uh, Kelly. Kelly's like, what is I your don't love, have a love language? language? <laughs> Somebody ask Kelly, what is your love Somebody language? Somebody please ask Kelly. She Somebody just went please like this. ask her. Anybody? <laughs> Kelly, put that phone down. How many of you know your love language? Raise your hand. How many of you do not know your love language? Raise your hand. It's okay to be honest, please. If you don't know your love language, your own love language, raise your hand. Okay. Okay. All right. That's that's all right. We're awesome. gonna we're gonna we're gonna give you a really quick. This is a very important tool you need, people. I'm very telling you. Very quick explanation of it. the five love languages. I still suggest you buy the book and read it. Okay. Now, one love language is words of affirmation. Basically, this just speaks to the personality, uh, looks, actions that the other person has, does, or you know how they look. Um, for example, I appreciate you washing the car. You look fantastic today. It's like you you got a haircut, babe. You look cute. Fine. It's about time. No, but it. you know, cute little you you say things that make that that brings that person's uh, steam self steem up, right? Uh, your warts are like rain falling on dry soil almost for them. Are these still examples or you mean it? 
No, no, <laughs> I, I mean it. I mean it. Anyways, another, go another. Go no, no, you go with the next one. The you next sure? one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. sure love talking to that girl. Hey. <laughs> she prepared a, almost the whole ninety percent of the class, y'all. So give it up for my wife because she's an amazing. Ninety nine point uh, nine. Amazing organization Just skills. Kidding. Okay, 99. so acts of service. Somebody said that back there, right? So I think that's Alan's um, acts of service. Action speaks louder than words. You ever heard that person? That person loves acts of service, okay? Doing things like, you know, washing a car like Dennis say, you know, doing chores. We're not just talking about people you're dating. We're talking about anybody in your life. Everyone right. has a love language. This could be your mama, your daddy. You know, you've been having a bad relationship with them. Then because of the fact that you don't know their love language. Maybe because of the fact that they don't know your love language. And y'all always like this. Does that make sense? So um, there's also gifts. Whose love language is gifts? Toledo. Don't mean all of y'all have to raise your hand. So this is no, pretty self-explanatory, <laughs> right? Who enjoys receiving gifts? Have you ever been to an episode and of Oprah? Giving, and right? giving. And, and giving. also, it's not about just receiving. This person also has to enjoy giving gifts. That's Toledo. Right? Say that so, sure. you know, you need to ask questions. You need to ask what this person's into. You know, and, and, and it does not have to be expensive gifts, okay? Yes. And Last one, uh, one of the last ones is quality time, okay? The wife was complaining about he works, he pays, he does, but he never spends time with me. So you're in a relationship now. Your wife, you come home every night. You're tired. You don't want to talk to her. You go up to the room. You leave the kids alone. And what's going on? The wife still feels empty. You might be a doctor. You might be a lawyer. You might be somebody very successful with financial gains. But guess what? Your family is miserable. Why? Because you are not understanding your own wife's love language. She needs you. She needs your time. She needs you just to listen to her, to talk to her. And a lot of times, people go and get uh, divorces with lawyers and get lawyers because they just didn't know what that person that they married, what love language was. So quality time is not the same as just watching TV. It's actually turning off the TV, sitting there, get a nice glass of wine if you're over the age of 21, sit in the, you know, put some candles up, put the kids to sleep and sit there and just talk to each other. Go outside the patio. Go Unde outside the backyard. Undivided you know? attention. Undivided, undivided attention. attention. Just talk some, give some time to your person, you know. Uh, physical touch. Paulo just Paula, woo, Paula started Clever. raising, getting excited. <laughs> Calm down, Paulo. Calm down. Wait a second. I'm about, you know, you, you can get a watch God send your wife with no hands. You'll be like, oh God, why, Lord? Why'd you do that to me, Lord? Wouldn't that be amazing? But look, hugging. How many of you know huggers? Okay. How many of y'all know people that love to hold hands? Right? Sometimes I get annoyed with you know, like with the woman my hand. That sounds cute. Right? Let's walk on the beach and hold hands. I'm like, bro, Let's get off me. Sleepy you know what I'm saying? Time? But you know what? When we go to bed, guess who doesn't want me within 20 I feet of her? Not. I right? Do so not. don't even don't even space. start that. Yeah, uh -huh. people, that sounds cute. It sounds mm. cute. Caressing. Okay, there's some Physical people. Touch is not my, my language for there's sure. There's some people that love, you know, when you just come. Look, there's people. That never had a father, never had a mother, that never has uh, 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 maybe a sibling or somebody to come close to them. And, 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 and so when they learned that, when they felt that for the first time, man, you know what I'm saying? It was like, and it's not only sexually, it's just, you know, it's something that, you know, that person never had a human touch. Imagine somebody who was abused when they were young and they finally have somebody that knows how to touch them in the most caring, loving way. What do you think that person's love language is going to be, man? You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're talking about. Yes. Um, now, here's what Tiago asked earlier. A lot of you said that you don't know what your love language is. So how can you find out what your love language is? First, you make observations. Observe yourself. See how you react to things. What are things that you complain about the most? You complain about people not helping you? Do you complain about people not hanging out with you? I haven't seen my friend in so long. You know, let's hang out. Or, hey, if you go to the store, uh, bring me something. You know, if you go shopping, bring me something. These are the kind of things that you can sort of like examine what, what you know, what you're needing, what you complain most about, what you request most about. And that should kind of guide you to identify what your love language is. And obviously, learning your love, your your partner's love language before marriage will really really help out later on after the two years fade away it'll that's, come in handy. that's when you go from puppy love to, to mature, real work to, to a relationship okay that's when the looks is not enough that's when he's not opening the door anymore 
That's when she's not, you know, coming up to back to you and giving you that back massage that you always loved in your neck. You know, she, when, when, when all that's done, when the two years, you know, bro, that's how you look without makeup? Jesus Christ, right? When that phase is done, then the, this is what you need, okay? So let's go on to the third point. All right. Bring it out, babe. Spiritual. This is huge, 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 huge. I mean, I don't mean to sound like that one person, but is it's it huge? huge, okay? It's huge. It's huge. Um, spirit, I can't even say it. Spirituality is not to be equated with going to church, all right? What do I mean by that? What happens when one person wants to go to church, but the other pe person doesn't? When you're you know. married now. Now we're talking about, you know, we dated, we thought we liked God, right? You like the same God, right? We're talking about Jesus or Allah. I don't know. It's not, you said God, so we never specified which God. Are you talking God, with, and like, now we're capital married, G guess or, what? like, you know? lowercase little and G? And now we're going to go, right? oh, it's Sunday. <laughs> uh, you know, classes, classes de, you know, Sunday American. school class starts at 10. And he's over here talking about, what, no, I know, but kickoff is at 11.30 Eastern time. I have to watch that game first. And so... You never talked about that, right? So, so is you, attending church essential to you, right? What about your partner? Many couples, and this is so true, trust me, because this is true, okay? Um, no, I, but it's true because I just spoke to somebody about it this week. Oh, wow. Uh, but many couples oh, don't even talk about their spiritual compatibility when they're dating because they're so focused in being in love. And our view on spirituality greatly influences our lives uh if it matters to you right if it matters to you right. correct and a lot of people you know right now you might be half committed half not committed but later on when that difficult situation comes to you know to be part of your life then when you decide okay i think i'm gonna become now like you know fully committed <laughs> then, the other person, Jesus now. <laughs> then the other person might be confused like wait a second when we were dating you didn't say anything about this but now all of a sudden now this is important to you so this is how issues sort of begin now are you, the beliefs compatible right. between you and your and your partner let's see what the bible says about this uh, second corinthians if you guys want to keep this in your notes second corinthians yeah, 6 14 there. says don't become partners with those who reject god okay i don't know how more clear can this be how can you make a partnership out of right and wrong that's not partnership that's what war man it's is light best friends with dark does christ go strolling with the devil only to beat him up in, in behind an aisle uh, an alley uh do trust and mistrust hold hands so it's very clear are you clear on what you believe first of all and why you believe it right scott right <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes when you are in church, we come here, and, and, and it's, it's a good feeling, right? We're here, we're singing, some of us are playing, we'll sing, but are you sure of your faith? Because, man, once you meet that person, they're either going to, you know, it's like when they say, you know, the people that like to date people who are not Christian, no, I'm just rescuing them. And what ends up happening is that they actually pull you down like the Titanic. Okay, you can never, if, you, if, you, if you're going to be a, a, a dating missionary Christian, I'm telling you, it's the most risk, riskiest uh, uh, thing there is, okay? And so, a, a lot of times, you know, when we're speaking of this, it's like, how can we bring this, and as an example, in our lives, and how our spirituality came true, and it manifested in our life, and it was nothing more clear than the day that we found that our son needed surgery, yes. right? And so, I think that, that, that really showed God like, right. who, who we were, we were going to trust At in. that moment, it's like we had something in common, and it was our desire. The most to, important thing in common. Yes, to seek God, and not necessarily because it, it was a difficult situation, but that's when you will test the most. That's when you will be tested the most, and your relationship will also be tested the most. So who are you going to run to when you're going through a life challenging out of your control situation are you going to trust you know alcohol are you going to go uh, see a palm reader are you going to seek god are you going to come together as one and seek god so this is why this is so important and it's really important for you to ask yourself 
what kind of Christian are you? Are you a holiday Christian? Do you only come to church on Easter and Christmas? And when there's a conference and somebody drags you and they make you, mm. you know, come here? Are you a regular attendee? Do you come every Sunday, right? At least I come every Sunday. I mean, I'm, I'm getting my, you know, my church time. Are you like the, check. the VIP radical <laughs> ones that are part of the youth events, worship groups, dance, media, daily devotional every Tuesday night? I mean, if you're That's the all star, here. That's awesome. if you're the all star yes. and you're dating the Easter and Christmas person, bro. That's that's not gonna work, bro. <laughs> you're asking for trouble, bro. So, um, did you also did you know that spiritual differences will not likely change after you get married? A lot of people put this in the back burner because they say, "Well, it'll work itself out. We'll figure it out." Right now, I go to church. He doesn't care, um, or it might be the other way, you know. But it's it's not. It'll, it'll, come, it'll come back to haunt you. So this is why this is extremely important that you guys consider this. And if truly God is your priority in your life, then give him the place in your relationship as well and what you're choosing. Um, don't ignore the warning signs. If somebody's giving you, you know, it's maybe coming at you and telling you, hey, Do we have to go every just, week? Just, just think about it, you know. This is, this is important. This should be one of the most important things in your relationship. Not, not the looks, not the money. You might have the looks today and not the looks tomorrow. You might have the money today and not tomorrow. But your connection with God, that's something that should be solid. And you need to find out where you stand so that then you can know what to look for in the other person. I, I'll, just, I'll just say this just so that the night goes by and we didn't say it. If you are a person of faith, you should never date somebody who's not in the same faith as you. I don't care what you are, whatever religion you want to claim, even if you're atheist, do not date somebody outside of religion. Man, you, I'll just leave that out there. You can do your own research. It's up here, 2 Corinthians and, 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 6, and, 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 14, you know, 15. And you can figure out. I know, I know sometimes, you know, there's religions that seem similar. We, I mean, we call them God, you know, stuff like that. But I'm just telling you right now. If you want to mix those things, I'm telling you, you're going to have a hard time later in life. Not even considering children, considering other things and families, traditions. I'm just saying, people, you know, uh, just think about it. That's all we want you to do, if anything, okay? So Right. So, so far, we've talked about how being in love is not the right decision to say, I do, right? We talked about the two faces of romantic love. And we talked about spirituality. Now, moving on to the fourth topic. This is a fun Which one. is to live or not to live together. Who here believes that you should live together before you get married? You should be I'm, honest. I'm like, a sure. Half of y'all done it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> how many of you know people? Hey, okay, here's the no, truth. No, no. How many Who how knows many? that's cheaper to live together before you get married? <laughs> that's true. But no, 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 for real. How many of you do know a couple, right? Yes. Or that, okay, how about this one? How about a couple that calls themselves Christian and they're living together, right? Um, a new study by the Pew Research Center that was published in November of 2019, and you can Google this, tells you all the stats. Um, it says the share of adults who have lived with a romantic partner is now higher than the share who have ever been married. So more people are living together than, than getting married. However, married adults are more satisfied with their relationships as they are more trusting of their partners. Now there's a huge wide acceptance of cohabitation in our culture. 69% in the study, 69% of people uh, that were part of the study agreed that it was okay whether they wanted to, whether the couple wanted to get married or not 69% said it's okay if they want to live together i mean i see no issues with that 16% agreed with the couple living together if they plan to get married but only 14% believe that it's just not a good idea at all um, now why has premarital cohabitation become the new norm right for one it makes logical sense from a short-sighted human perspective. You can evaluate, people can say, I can see my boyfriend, my girlfriend all the time, I can see what ugly or bad habits he or she might have, and I can, you know, 
I can I can keep a, a closer eye on this person, how they behave, what they do. We can live in the Galleria and get a, a nice apartment and pay half and half. You, you can know, be save cheaper. money. You can live save in Aunt Katie, money, right? We can party. You can split the rent, so it, you know it can be a better lifestyle per se. Drive um, home at night when your wife used to live in Rosenberg and you used to live in Katie and you used to have to drive. Tiago knows about that. I, uh, oh, you know, you could just spend we the night dating, instead of driving. Right? I didn't. Nice. I didn't have a car for a while, and well, my mom. Even if I had a car, she probably wouldn't have let me go to his house. Not. <laughs> so you know, you have to. You don't have to deal with the driving home part after you know if you live together. So convenience. It is right. right? So. People are celebrating, <laughs> society celebrates this, right? Yes. I mean, if you ain't, uh, you know, test driving before you buy it, what are you thinking, right? So, but even many Christians have made this a norm in our culture today. So, you know, society, you know, loves the whole trying before buying experience, right? right? And sadly, also, some church leaders oh. kind of turn a blind eye. What are their names? On that. Uh, um, <laughs> they. <laughs> you know, we got leaders who, you know, condemn it in church, but then are, you know, not uh, in this church. Very silent. Not in this church because we're speaking very silent it now. On, we're, on the we're, issue. We're right? talking about it, and this is why we're talking about it, so that right. when you get out of here, you have to make a choice later on in life. At least you, you cannot say you never heard about this. Nobody ever told me it was bad. Uh, but anyhow, what happens in the church is that a lot of pastors, they do the, they, they say, hey, I don't agree with it. Maybe you guys should consider not living together it, while they're doing their premarital classes. But what happens? They still end up marrying them. Yeah. So it's, it's just, you know, same with the family and friends. You get because, people who are like, man, if I tell them, hey, look, Joyce can't like, I mean, I really like them. They're my, they're my pretty good friends. And I know they're living together. Okay, this is all pretend. Everybody's like, <laughs> this is an example. So you're like, you know, hey, you know, but like, I mean, if I go up to Canada, I tell him, bro, like, how, who am I to tell my bro not, you know, to, you know, it's so, and then who am I to go up to Joyce and tell her, you know, so it's like, if I do that, then I'm going to ruin our friendship and they're going to get friendship. awkward and things are going to be blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I'll just go ahead and let them try it out because it's better for me to keep our friendship then, you know, embarrass myself, and they can figure out five years from now when they break up or get a divorce. So that's the kind of friend you are, then, you know, also keep that in mind. Your lack of your silence and your lack of input in somebody's life that you have an influence over can also determine later on, bro, you, was it, what thing Kane's going to tell me? Bro, you never said anything about it, bro. Why, why didn't you tell me back then? Why didn't, why didn't you at least say something, right? So we're not telling you to tell people what to do. We're just telling you when the opportunity arises, it's okay for you to tell them, hey, man, you know, I, I have nothing but love for you. I don't but care for you. And I think, you know, that this, 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 you know, and, and if you can take it or leave it, man, it's not something that, you know, I, I want us to break our friendship over. But right. I just want to tell you from a, from a loving place, you know what I'm saying? But you make your decision, bro. You do you, bro. <laughs> Now, so yeah. we talked about why it's so normal. Let's talk now about the consequences. What are the consequences? The dreaded breakup, right? You have, by living together, you have built now a strong bond with your partner that when you break up, it's such a painful experience. It's going to be a painful experience. And it might just damage the image, uh, the picture that you have of what a good functional relationship is. So next time when you when you're ready to... Uh, commit to another relationship, it's kind of going to hold you back because in your mind, what happened with that person is probably what's going to happen with this person. So it's, it's, it damages. So let's the, say you dated somebody and you did, like, so you have four relationships and all of them you lived in together with that person, right? So this, this is somebody, right? I'm not saying anybody here. But, and the fifth one was the right one. The fifth one was the one that God had. So all these bumps came along the road. But then you get to the fifth one. I was like, man, why even marry? Right? Because I already tried like four times and look at what happened. But here's the problem. You doing things out of order, expecting blessings from God in his order. So you taking God's order, changing it to your order, and then complaining that you're not getting God's results. Yes. Does that make any sense? So please... Please, if you are going to live your life like that, if you are going to make decisions like that, don't then say to everybody around the world, "Marry? What? Why marry, fool? Like, look, look, I already, already, you know, already have tried it or whatever my way tried it, you know. So don't 
complicate, uh, don't confuse the two, okay? If you're going to do your shady version of marriage, you're going to play house, play house, okay? But don't confuse that with marriage according to Bible uh, uh, standards, Bible okay? Says. That's yeah. the only thing I, I wish we can get that clear. Right. So in addition to the dreaded breakup, there's a fear factor. One person gives everything, right? You're giving your time, you're giving your emotions, you're giving your money, um, everything, your body, everything to the other person, but yet you don't even know if the other person is going to stay committed in their relationship. So this is the thing, the lack of commitment, um, and it creates insecurity and fear within insecurity the is a big one. You know, it's like you, you, you play house, we're just playing. You know, we can break the lease whenever we feel like it. You know, you can stay. I'll stay paid. You know, so it's still not. Actually, I know. You know there's, a a, there's an escape, right? There's always together. an escape to get out. Just because After they, they broke up. <laughs> so they can continue to lease the credit when he gets back. Because they, uh, yep. That's rough so, right so that, there, bro. that happens. You got to keep I, I looking know, at her. Personally. And every night, and you got to come back to the, just so your credit so. don't go bad. <laughs> like, oh, no, Lord. I'll, go uh, ahead. I'll, I'll get the credit plan thing. Um, another consequence is that it sets the bar too high. Um, as you know, right, most of us have been guilty of this. Uh, when you initially start dating, you always show your best self, right? You're perfect. Nobody has to tell you to pick up after yourself. You always do your hair. You always, you know, you're always looking sharp, always doing everything right. But the reality is that's not how it's always going to be, right? Um, the, ris the reason is How's very it gonna simple. How's going to be? <laughs> nah. People let go, you know, eventually, Jesus after Christ. the two years, that's what we're talking about. After the two years, people kind of let go. They get their their feet off the gas pedal, and what happens? They let go, and they let God. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, this is me now. Embrace myself. Oh, and no, that's wow. that's good. That's all good. Mm -mm. Uh, we're not talking about that right now. But the, the point is, it's you're setting the bar too high as something that's not realistic, right? And then you go expecting that for an extended forever, long time. Um now, what's the result? Disillusionment. You know, you're, you're, you're living in a, a fake reality. It's just an illusion for that time being. And so, again, you know? it kind of damages so, the image of marriage in you your You get mind. married with somebody you've been living with for two years. What, what, what's going to happen on Monday? It's just another what Monday. What happens after the wedding? Nothing. It's, it's, there's nothing. It takes out that meaning, that importance that God put on when the man leaves his mom and dad and the woman lives her, leaves her mom and father and they unite to be one, right? And we want that for you guys. We want you to have that experience where he's going to lift you. I never, I wasn't able to do that, Deanna, but I kind of did. I kind of did. I kind of did. She was like, baby, you don't have to. I was like, babe, stop. It's like, and so I lifted her. We got into our first apartment and stuff like that. And we were able to, you know, our first night, we got our door. We were in there. The, the whole thing was empty. You know, man, it's like, God, guys, like, why would you want to push in and ruin that, right? Just so that you can say, I'm independent. You're not independent because you're going to be alone again in about a year or two. And you're going to be in another situation, right? So we want you to have at least those moments that are going to be landmarks in your life, right? If they mean anything to you, if they don't, I am sorry that you feel that way. So, um, the biggest tra uh, tragedy, like Dina was saying, that couples are living outside of God's will, right? In the end, it is God, uh, outside of God's will. Uh, and, and, and if we focus on Genesis 2.24, I want you all to read this with me, right? Genesis 2.24, is it up there? Awesome, read it out loud. This, that is why... A man, okay, so when I say read it with me, I mean like everybody. Okay, so one, two, three. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and become one flesh. Okay. Now, the order here, this is what Tiara was just referring to earlier. The order here is important. First, they get married. Then they become one. So premarital cohabitation, what it does, <laughs> is that it reverses the order because people become one. And then if it works out, then they decide that they want to get married. Or it just completely eliminates marriage from the picture. And that's not what God intended. So again, we're here to follow God, to follow his will, to follow his design, his perfect design, which was intended for people to unite first in marriage and then become one. Right?
Okay. Um, now, moving on to the next awesome part. This is what we all came here to hear about. I'm going to go off the outline here for this one because I feel yes. like we're... But I want you guys to just follow with me, okay? So this part is called, everybody say with me, S-E-X, sex. Isn't it a fun word to say? It is a fun word to say, boys and girls, because here in Tiago's class, <laughs> we're going to show you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're not going to show you anything. We have some pictures and diagrams. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. That me and my wife. No, I'm kidding. No, that's wow. enough. That's that's it. That's it. I'm kidding. That's wow. that's that's when you cross oh that. <laughs> All right, but we're talking about. Unfortunately, we're talking about sex, the premar premarital kind. Okay. So, do you know that I feel like today, our society is starving for two things. Okay, for truth and intimacy. Right, and and, and we believe lies about it right the more sex i have the more intimate i will be with my partner right and let me ask you a question how many times you don't have to answer this <laughs> how many times have you had sex with somebody and that was everything y'all ever needed and the rest was just i was like i don't know about you or at sex, least the sex people. is great the married people can sex say that's is not great true. let me tell you Married people, sex, you know. But did you know, statistically speaking, you will have sex 1% of your life, your married life, out of everything else that you do. Think about it. Now, we're using the time. I know Paulo said, Paulo's like, I'm going to do about two or three. <laughs> and still, still leaves you 97% of your... <laughs> He's not married yet. A lot of youngsters speak, you know, a lot of things before they reach the great divine. Hey, hey, marriage, you might right? be at the highest the first two years, okay? Hey, man, the first two years, you're going to catch about half percent, okay? <laughs> after that, after that, you have a whole lifetime for the other. Okay, we're talking about time, right? I mean, let's be realistic. There's 24 hours in a day. Calm down, okay? I know there's nothing but tigers and lions here, but y'all calm down, okay? Y'all going to end up being some kittens and puppies when it comes to it. All right, so think about that. Can you imagine if I decided to, like, calculate my intimacy with my wife on 1% of our relationship? How stupid is that? You know, God created sex for, and he's the creator of it, right? But our society wants to change it and redefine it. And so here we go. Uh, we have a society that's starving for truth and they believe lies. Imagine when, uh, you know, uh, uh, when, when, and when Hitler was, uh, you know, murdering, killing all those Jews. People believed what he was saying. A society was believing a lie, thinking it was true. And so today we have a society of young people believing what TV is telling them about sex, thinking that it's true. And so there are lies society has made normal. First lie is sex creates intimacy. I just told you it's 1% of your whole relationship over a lifespan. Of and marriage. one thing that we can compare it to and think about, think about, for instance, prostitutes, right? Uh, they expose their bodies to multiple men. But yet, they're, there's no I would connection. say, most likely, on the higher percentage, there is no intimacy between her and the if clients, If sex was right? a, a point of so intimacy, right? She should, she should be connected with every client she has. Right. And there is no connection, right? Second lie is starting sex early will help you to get to know one another and become more compatible later on. The buy it, uh, the try it before you buy it scheme, right? And so... You know, if, if uh, you know, you can't deny it, you know, that those who are sexually actively explore pleasure. Of course. However, they, the, 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 they are missing out on the best route to marital happiness. Man, you know, can you imagine somebody who, you know, telling Adam and Eve, hey, bro, 
before you try it out, go to uh, this website. You got to watch a bunch of videos, and then you got to, you know, uh, you know, you, you, before you can learn to. Do you think anybody told Adam and Eve they had to go learn how to do what they needed to do? No. God created it, not porn sites, not dating sites. Somebody was saying this other, and, and I want you to guys check out this book later on. It's called Cheap Sex, and I'll tell you the author name. I had it, and it was just talking about how, you know, nowadays with the whole movement we have in our culture of uh, Me Too and, you know, women's right and all these things, which are awesome things. I really hope that actually comes to be that women do get the respect and the, you know, the, the view from men that they deserve and all that good stuff that that's the way God intended. I don't know, you know, what people are getting that view from. But that when you um, put your, oh, okay, now you just distracted me with that. So I forgot what I was going to say. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, okay, I forgot. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It happens, you know, but I love you, though. Sorry, and that's how you overcome the, time. the book, Cheap Sex, yes. So, they were saying, I still forgot. <laughs> I, still, I still forgot because it was like numbers and I forgot. But anyways, so My bad. Sorry. it's all right. It happens to the best of us. Look at, look at us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, so third lie. Uh, Did you talk about the second one? Yeah, I think I talked okay. about it. All right. All right. I didn't know how right. deep I got into it. I was going to go with something else, but. Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to add but on please here. Go. Sex in itself is an art that is learned. Right. It, it doesn't need to be explored. It doesn't need to be prematurely explored. Um, you were going to talk about how. Don't tell me I won't talk no, about. no, no. I was going to tell you. I'm going to tell you because you, you, you mentioned it to me before. OK. How uh, because of all, all the things that women have to compete with, you know. Oh, before. yes, please. I got it. All right. So we live in a society now where women are, you know, empowerment. Right. But what in the. What the book was saying that nowadays men have so much more power over sex than ever before. And, and you're thinking, you're looking at me like, how? Like, women rule the world, Tiago. No, you actually don't. Not in that area. You know why? Because there is so much more available now. How much does sex cost? How much does sex cost? It can be free on your phone, and you don't even need a woman. You don't even need a partner, per se. How about dating apps? That has opened up the field to where it used to be Tiago goes to church. You know, he goes to a small church, so he sees about, you know, 40 to 30 girls. Maybe some are older, some are younger. But we're going to call them all there. Let's say 30. Now Tiago goes to church, but now there's also those girls have options where they can now go on internet and find other people all over the world the, the country the, their city so now it's not only tiago and 30 girls it's more like tiago competing against hundreds of other guys it's 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 tiago now he i, I mean tiago has other options right it's also tiago also having option just to be so addicted to something like pornography that he doesn't need a real woman now Sometimes, did you know that there's guys that are so addicted that sometimes that brings so much. I think this was covered. I don't want to focus too much on it. But it brings so much. Uh, there, there, like, it becomes impossible for a woman to bring the same pleasure that the TV or the Internet or, or the porn site does for them. And so, girls, as much as, you know, we want to go out there and say that, you know, we were the world, you know, that stuff like that. You need to be very careful with what type of guy you're surrendering your body to. In every single aspect, okay? It's not just about, you know, um, 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 desires and just about, you know, and, and how, how long you're going to hold on to that thing that God gave you, that gift that's supposed to be a gift. It's supposed to be to marriage, right? But some, some, some of us are giving it up on the first night, on the first meet, you know, and, and it becomes worthless after a while. And then you wonder why there's no connection in marriage because now you're addicted to multiple partners, and when you get married, you're told to have one partner, and you don't understand why you can't stop cheating. Okay? And this is actually the point under line number three. Um, casual sex without long-term commitment is both fun and freeing. But then you face that problem that he just explained. You're so used to exposing yourself to multiple people, and you think that after you say, I do, you magically just become a one-woman man 
or a one man woman where you will be fully satisfied by that one person. And it doesn't right. magically happen like that. So point number, line number four, sure, surely God understands that this is the 21st, sorry, I put 20th, uh, 21st century, right? Who nowadays, right? If you go around and just ask people who's, you know, who's, who's still a virgin? That's such a weird thing. Who, what? You know, like you, you're not having sex with your boyfriend. It's funny when Tiago and I were uh, still dating, we weren't married. Uh, people didn't understand how we couldn't, you know, we didn't live together. It was such a weird thing. And this was like 12 years ago. Now I imagine now it's probably even crazier if you just say, I don't, you know, we don't, we're not sexually active or whatnot. Um, the scripture is very clear when it talks about sexual intercourse outside of marriage and how he labels it as sinful. And we, we know about God who made the seventh commandment that says, do not commit adultery. Okay, you might say, ah, that's in the Old Testament. We don't believe in that. But Jesus also spoke about it. Jesus in Mark 7, 21 talks about sexual immorality. Paul also talks about it. He says, flee from sexual immorality in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, 19. And also in the same chapter 6, uh, verse 13 says, the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Um, you know, I mean, there's tons of verses, Hebrews uh, 13, 4, 1 Corinthians 7, 2, they talk about it. So don't think blindly that, you know, this is not applicable. God's things in the Bible, those are, you know, for back in the day. No, it still applies. It still applies, and it's it's a true thing now. Um, and I just want to read this one. 1 Corinthians 7, 2 says, But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife, and each woman with her own husband. Now, the key words here are sex with wife and or husband, not with boyfriend and girlfriend. So let's be very clear that this is something that the Bible does talk about. Um, and in my opinion, I don't believe that God is actually putting this rule because he's boring and he doesn't want you to enjoy it. On the contrary, because he created us and he designed us, he knows what the perfect time for you to enjoy it is within marriage. So that's what we have to say about that. Now, the last part is, which is maybe some of you might be wondering, how can I develop a healthy dating relationship whenever you're looking to uh, a serious. more serious commitment? And so I'm going I'm to wrap this up right now in two minutes. Give me two minutes, okay? So there's two stops. There's two stages. One is casual dating. Do y'all know what casual dating is? You can go casual dating with a friend, with a person that you're kind of like getting to know, okay? It's not. I know sometimes the vocabulary, you hear date. You know, girls go on date. Guys go on date. We don't want to call it date. We just hang out. But it's a date. If it's in a calendar and there's a time and there's a, it's a date, okay? So when two people are going in, 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 in casual dating, that might be a concert, a bike ride, you know, going out to dinner, coffee, dessert later. And from there, you're going to decide, are we going to, Keep this a friendship? Are we, is one of us interested and the other one isn't? Are we going to have to break it off? Or both of us are interested and they can be, lead to something else. And now we hop on to the uh, a committed, you know, uh, a committed dating. So if when you get to the point where you're in a committed dating relationship, this is more serious, right? Now we're exclusive. Casual dating, you're not exclusive. Committed dating, you are? Okay, one person. And the, so... You, you know, at the same time, you're putting your best face forward when you're doing that. So not always the most honest way because it doesn't really reveal who you really are at the beginning. But, you know, you need to have a couple things before you, once you get into that committed relationship. One is honesty. Be honest with the person that you're, 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 you're getting that committed relationship with, okay? Uh, how messed up would it be for you to get into uh, a committed relationship with somebody and then only tell them about your sexual past once you get married? And then they're confused about why you're acting the way you are. You never talked about it when you were dating. You know, uh, besides honesty, you or also about need to... your finances. Financial habits. Finances. That's, that's a huge okay. one, too. Big important if you're going to get um, serious with somebody. What okay? if you ha you're the one type of person that you don't like debt, but you're, like, always very responsible with your money, and then you marry somebody that has 
thirty thousand dollars worth of credit card debt, mm. right? That's what do you think it's going to happen? And they already your use savings, the airline points, <laughs> so now you're really messed your up. Your savings you know? are going to be used to pay that off. Yeah, that's so. What it will these be are used things for. that you need to discuss and talk Spending about habits. before. How beforehand. much you want to give to charity? How much they want to give? You know, does it matter to them? Okay, uh, family dynamics. You know, Jogton's going out there getting the baddie. And, you know, she comes from no father, and she was raised by her mother. Jogton has a mommy and daddy who raised them, and he had a happy little family home all his life. How do you think that dynamic is going to be between them two? It's going to be different. And imagine if she never, you know, if, if he doesn't intrigue to know about her mom. How, what happened to your dad? Were you, right. were, did he leave you? Do you have daddy issues? Does a guy have mommy issues? There's a lot of guys have mommy issues. Let me and tell you that before. Too. And daddy issues too, right? Yeah. So yeah. you need to learn these things. They come from divorced parents. If they do, how are you going to deal with it? Because it might go from generation to generation. Okay? So what, what, are, what are the thoughts about it, right? In a healthy relationship, each person should support the other's also educational and vocational goals. Okay, if you're dating somebody and they tell you drop out of school because I'm going to take care of you, girl, run, run, because that's a selfish human being. And it's He's literally destroying your career and destroying your dreams and goals and promising you things that he can't guarantee. And you don't so know be if they very will careful. be there forever. Those huge, not, huge yeah. red flag. If yes. somebody's telling you to stop your goals in order for them to, for you to please them or something like that. Okay. Now, so lastly, go ahead. Lastly. In a healthy relationship, there has to be balance in the following areas. Intellectual aspect. What do we mean by intellectual? Are you able to have a conversation that stimulates your brain, right? Are you a scientist and you're like thinking about having a relationship with a college, uh, a high school dropout person or somebody that just has no interest, right? Um, how does that, will that stimulate your brain? Are you able to have any kind of common conversations at all in that sense? Um, are you... Good example is the hot girl who's sitting at the table and she's like, ah, 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 but she's so beautiful, right? And the guy's just like, I don't care. Just, just don't make her talk, you know, or something like that, right? Or the guy who is just like a jock, right? And, they're, and, and, you know, so there has to be some intellectual connection between. And I'm not right. talking about both of you have to be scholars, not okay? Not at all. Not the other is a chemical engineer, able? okay? My wife, you know, she knows her engineering, but... I also, I, I was very into, like, you know, politics whenever I was growing up. And I'm very intrigued into that. So when we have a connection or some things, maybe we can connect in that level of engineering or something. But sometimes when we say, hey, man, you want to read this book to better our, friend, uh, our relationship? Both of us are like, yeah, let's do it. Or so there's a desire you, to learn right. always, or right? Or are you just having conversations about the real housewives or whatever? Or, you know, some what, guys what's, enjoy what's the that. level, you know? Atlanta? Okay, some but guys enjoy that. There should be a balance. There know? should be a balance. But if that's are all you talk about. we just talking about the Kardashians all day. You know, you need to be careful with what kind of guy you're dating. That's probably a That's what you're talking about. <laughs> well, that's right. um, we're talking about the emotional balance. So we talked about intellectual aspect, the emotional balance. Um, emotional, basically, it's how you respond to things, right? And I just want to do an example here because this really uh, impacted me when I heard about it um, and I haven't asked for permission to talk about it but whenever Talita and Alan experience their loss um, you know Talita talked about how it was very difficult for her to get over that but Alan never pushed her Alan never complained to her okay it's been too long come on let's move on you know this we can get over this and this is the kind of support and the things that you need to look for are you being you know, judged by the way you respond to things. We all respond differently to separate to, to situations. So have somebody that can emotionally support if you. If your significant other is telling you to get over it, then you need to get over them. <laughs> then there's got to be social balance. Are you the kind of person that's extremely friendly? Are you the kind of person that just enjoys that being around <laughs> people and you want to go to concerts and you want to do things? Or are you more of the homebody person? You, you enjoy being by yourself, you know? Um, you know, what's the balance? What are the things? You know, these are the things that you need to look for. Not that they're necessarily bad. It's just for you to be aware and conversate about it before. Spirituality. Um, the spiritual aspect. We're already you talked about that. it plenty. Make so, sure again, people. compatibility. What extremely, do you extremely, in? extremely important. And last but not least, physical aspect. <laughs> we said that 10 minutes ago. Huh? 
The physical, physical aspect. Okay, here's, this is very simple. If the person you're with makes you want to vomit, then maybe, maybe you shouldn't marry that person. Okay? Guys, you have to be attracted to that person. Okay? You have to be physically attracted. Is it their right, eyes? Right. Is it their no, hair? You know, you can't that. be with somebody forced to be like, God, please give me the vision that you have. Um, <laughs> that won't work. You have it to won't. ask yourself, does this person respect your physical boundaries, right? If you say no, are they always pushing to go forward and, you know, try to do more than what you've said that that's it? You know, that's a red flag. Run away from that because that's well, not that's healthy at physical, all. Man. Okay. I'll yes, like that's another else. physical okay. aspect, right? There's a physical aspect of attraction. I think there's laws there's against that. When you say no, I think there's of like boundaries. laws or something that tells you you can't. So. If a woman <laughs> says no, doesn't mean try harder, okay? <laughs> it means stop, all right? Right. Um, and well, one last thing I just want to say that just to close off, I know we've been talking for a long time, uh, or Tiago has. But anyways, uh, uh, I just want to say that, you know, I know we're not perfect and we all have sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. But that is the amazing thing about God, that despite your past and despite the mistakes that you have made and despite the wrong decisions and the things that you've done in the past, none of that labels you at all. And this is why... We're here to share this with you guys now that you're young. Like I said, that was the first thing I said. This is the time for you to make a choice, for you to make a decision, for you to make the right decision. Because we would love to see all of you happily married one day. And don't waste your time now being with one person, being with the other, and changing your mind. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. Don't, don't devalue yourself. And know that regardless of anything that has ever happened to you, physically emotionally god can restore you Amen. and th th i want to i don't know if uh, we can pray um Amen. for everybody here yeah. um just forgot to heal our hearts heal any pain anything that you guys have been through uh that you have experienced um and forgot to restore the vision of marriage to the Amen. vision of dating because if you come from broken families maybe that's something that will affect you um, as you, you know, you might think, well, that doesn't exist. That's not real, but it is. And God has a plan for everyone here. Um, you know, maybe you might be called to be single and just do the work of God. But if you're not, Paolo, we Paolo, want you. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he said no. That's not his But calling. if not, we definitely want God to help you decide and for you to use your wisdom and all these tools to choose the right person that you want to be with. So Amen. with that, if you can pray for everybody Guys, here. Guys, stand up with us. Let's pray together. Y'all pray for us. We'll pray for you. We'll pray that God gives you the vision. The, the, be smart about dating. You know what I'm saying? Like, inv be that spy. Investigate. Push. Man, get all that out of the way. This is the time to do it. You know how some of your girls be acting like, oh, I can find the truth. Well, find it now. Don't find it after, you know, later when it's going to cost you money and regret. You know, do it now, man. Be smart about it. Get off that puppy love mentality, dude. Get in the real world. Get, get, get your mind right. I need, a, I, need, I need a partner. I need a ride or die. You know what I'm saying? I need somebody that can take care of my children. I want somebody that when my kid is five years old, I can tell him I picked the best mother. I picked the best father for you. It's not just about you. It's about your grandkids. It's about your children. It's about your future. It's about saying to your children, man, look, that father that you have, I picked it for you. You know, God gave it to me, but I picked it. And, and, and I want you to be able to say that. I want you to be saying that. I want you to say that. And I want you to say it to the right person. Okay, that's, that's all it comes down to. That the regrets, the less amount of regrets and, and pain you know, sorry, in your life. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for every single person that's here tonight, the opportunity to speak and to share this little bit of information that we get, Father. I know it took a long time, but God, sometimes this is the only time that we will be able to hear truth sometimes in some of our lives. I wish that 15 years ago, 10 years ago, somebody would have told me these things so that way I could prepare myself for a better dating um, dating life and, and be, be prepared
for my dating life. I wish I had known some of this stuff so I wouldn't have so much pain and anguish with my wife in the first couple years and the regrets and the pain and the sorrow that we made each other go through because we just didn't take time to learn some of this stuff, Father. But I thank you for today being able to share this with the youth of our church so that they can be even better than we were. They can even be more prepared than we were. And I thank you for every single person that's here tonight, from the youngest teenager to the oldest person who has made a couple mistakes in their life. Father, if there's somebody here tonight that's just wishing for restoration, re wishing for renewal, wishing for, I ask that you bring that, God, that, 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 that feeling inside their heart and that conviction that you have forgiven them, that you are, they are your child. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I love you, Lord. And I bless every single person here. And I declare, start praying for your, your significant other that God has for you every night. Start praying over them, even if you don't know them. Say, God, take care of my wife right now. Take care of my husband tonight. Wherever they are at, bless them. Protect them. Slap them if they're about to do something bad, Lord. You know? But I ask you, Lord, that my wife that my husband is in your hands and that you prepare so one day when I'm standing at that altar I know that was a gift from you God it wasn't a mistake it wasn't by chance it wasn't just a Disney movie with pretend happy endings but it was a purpose driven goal and a, and a miracle that God provided for me and an answer that God provided for me in the name of Jesus, I pray, and I bless every single person here tonight, including our marriage, Father, and every single pastor and leader of this church. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you guys, man.